We wrap up the week of live racing here at beautiful Gulfstream Park on this Sunday afternoon. A little bit cooler temperatures after a little bit of rain yesterday. That will leave us with a good turf course. But we are on the turf and a fast main track. Of course, we have the all-weather Tapita in play as well as we join you, Acacia Clement and Brian Natto coming here. I'm still getting used to the new name, but uh, we'll get there, Ryan. But we had it. We had a really good it's day. Your name? I know, I know. We had a good day of racing yesterday. Of course, uh, yeah. some races off the turf, but some nice stakes action, which we'll recap a little bit later on. And we have some really exciting maiden races to look forward to today. Yeah, I mean, obligatory yesterday was very, very good and gives her connections. Bill Mont, Judmont Farm, a uh, reason for a lot of optimism this year as a, as a newly minted four year old filly. But you're right, we end the weekend, uh, then the week today with some really, really strong races. I'm glad to see we stayed on the turf because we've got. Some yeah. really, really good turf races. The rails are out 50 feet, so uh, on a good turf course. So, yeah, that's exciting because, you know, we were hoping these races would, would stay together because they are very, very good. And we kick things off right on the turf yeah. to start too. A nine furlong maiden special weight race to start the day. We have 11 races today. Hopefully you uh, participated in the right way in daylight saving time. So <laughs> we're, we hope that you're here on time at 12 at 35 will be the first post this afternoon. And this does kick off the early pick five. Yeah, we'll take a look at my ticket. 36, uh, I think it actually got scratched down to 3150 because I got the all ball in race five. There was a scratch there. Uh, 249 here, we'll go over. Back to back singles, Presentia in race two, the seven American Matters in race three. We go one, five, six, an exciting race four. Maiden special weight for two-year-old fillies. We got loved in there, a half to Maxfield. Mm -hmm. Superstar for Brendan Walsh and Godolphin. And then I've got the all ball in race five, six furlong, three L that I really had no strong opinion. If you had the all ball in a couple of races yesterday, you <laughs> probably uh, bought a lot of drinks for your friends. Yeah, the early double <laughs> were some big, big prices yesterday. So we'll see. You have an even money uh, early favorite here in the opener going a mile and an eighth in this maiden special weight for the three-year-olds. A really nice way to kick off the day. Uh, I did land on the number two trending who is currently taking all of the early money. I really liked this horse getting to the turf last time for Shug McGay. He um, thought he ran very well just to beat in a neck. Jose Ortiz climbs aboard for Shug today. Uh, so we'll see what this one can do second time on the grass. Yeah, I mean, you can see it right there in front of you. She didn't run an inch on, on, on debut on the dirt mm -hmm. and Shug brings her over to the turf. That was not only your turf debut or two turn debut. Nine furlongs, yeah. a tough distance to try two turns. And she ran huge. Emma Jane Wilson uh, that day. And now Jose Ortiz is going to take over. It was a very, very strong run. We're well drawn. We're tactical. She'll be up and on the pace uh, throughout. Meanwhile, the number four Tallahatchie Bridge, second time out for Safi Joseph Jr. Usually a fruitful angle. Oh, yeah. The source, uh, what do you see from, from his debut? Yeah, let's take a look uh, at this debut actually because, uh, you know, he was really the only closer mm -hmm. to make a late dent. He's kind of mired in traffic here a little bit. The order of this race is 12, 10, 6. And so you see it right there. The 12 and 10 are, I know they're granted, they're very, very big long shots. I, so, you know, you can nitpick that a little bit. But here's uh, Tallahatchie Bridge back down there having trouble getting out kind of. Now the rail opens up. He's the only horse really to make any kind of late dent. We've talked so many times, Acacia, how Safi, you know, not to say he can't win first out. He's about 10, 11, 12 percent but it's not the game. The game is second out. You see it about 30% with a 229 ROI. Well, that's today, and I think it's a big move forward from Tallahatchie Bridge today. And though the winner was a big price, I do actually think that that was a fruitful race. The second place finisher, La Machina, yeah. came back to win with a 77 buyer speed figure. And Mom's Moon, that, that long shot winner, went on into Stakes Company mm -hmm. next time. So I think you can be a little bit more forgiving of his subsequent poor performance. Out of that race as well was the one Grand David, uh, who came back and tried the Tapita last time. You saw him kind of late there, switching over to that outside lead but this is a horse I realize yes he was with the flow of that race but he's inside speed once again I thought he could grab a share yeah without a doubt an aggressive ride from Jaramillo probably puts him on the lead and you know maybe they let him go maybe he gets brave I don't think they're going to be going that fast early so it could be another race that plays to that kind of style finally worth a mention the yeah. nine native thunder the half brother to multiple grade one winner CC who we saw back in the winner circle yesterday huge dirt pedigree on this one yet he debuts on turf didn't take much money and didn't do much running. Yeah, CC getting two turns yesterday, yeah. too. That was good to Big see. Um, you would think Native Thunder uh, moves forward. Wasn't really bet that day at 6-1, mm -hmm. to one, which is, you know, somewhat surprising. So maybe the connections kind of said, you know what, we might need a race. Uh, Miss Houdini was crazy fast, I believe, as a mm -hmm. two-year-old filly for Bob Baffer way back in yeah. the day. But I would take Native Thunder moves forward. Maybe this outside draw is not ideal, though. 
All right, Ortiz aboard for Todd Pletcher. Usually a dangerous combination. Yeah. As we go on to race number two, we stick with the maidens. This one a maiden claiming for $12,500. About a mile and a 16th on the tapita. The only tapita race of the day, actually, I believe, two. This one's for the three-year-old Phillies. And we land on the same horse, the number five, Presencia. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of reason to mm. think it, it's her. It's an Antonio kind of race, and, and she drops in half. She didn't run poorly last time, went fourth. And, you know, we've talked to when Antonio puts Irad or Jose on, mm -hmm. it seems to be signal some real intent. They're do, they're about 23% together. He's kind of the same uh, with Irad as well. I, I'd like to think that Jose's going to try to put this one in the game a little bit more because we don't want to drop out the back like she did last time. Uh, with that being said, to me, she looks best of her pretty modest sponge. And I think it's interesting, too, that Jose stays after yeah. having ridden her last time. She was off slowly. She was off slow, too. Starts back. Getting out of the gate's going to be the key today. Um, another class dropper, the two raw honey. I preferred the ones who were dropping down. Yes, she's been exposed at this level. She did finish second. Two starts back. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty fast race on the turf mm -hmm. last time. Uh, two starts back was in the slop, and she ran pretty well. Um, those seemed to me the two. I mean, mm -hmm. I could have dutched them and used them both in the pick five. I don't think that does anybody any help, though, to double the ticket. You've got to have an opinion. Presentia still got some upside. That was her first start for Antonio, while Raw Honey were kind of getting that uh, MO at 0 for 6. Yeah, as we turn the page, we go on to $6,250 claiming race. Non-winners of two in life. Six and a half furlongs on the main track here. I thought this was an interesting race. Let's start with the horse that you like, American Matters, as I knew you have a replay for this one as well. Um, takes the drop in class, second off the layoff. Yeah, that, that, that's it. Second off the layoff, the drop in class. Let's take a look at this replay, and here she is down inside. It just never worked out. Mm -hmm. This isn't the trip you want off an extended, almost a year layoff, yeah. about 11, 10 and a half, 11 months. She's on the hard chase down inside. That's never the spot. I don't care what kind of horse you are, unless you're speaker's corner. That's not a good <laughs> trip to pull. You're up against it the entire way. She predictably is going to back out of it here. Uh, but now... It's completely the opposite. She's outside today. As you mentioned, she takes the drop in class. I kind of wonder if maybe Bob ran her for, you know, 12-5 last time and just said, you know what, we're probably not going to get claimed. Let's get some fitness. Let's get a tightener. And then we come back today. I know he claimed her for 20 and the layoff, and it's not ideal. But at this point, it is what it is. And uh, I, I would think today she's in the right spot. Uh, he's in the right spot, excuse me, to mm. move forward and turn the tables on, on you know, get it going again. And you could see that in uncomfortable inside yeah. trip uh, off of a layoff, looking very leg weary, hanging on the left lead there in the stretch. I did go to the recency. I thought that the three chrome finish was a little bit intriguing in here. I, I do wonder what will happen with the pace as far as the presence of American Matters and being drawn in outside. But I thought we'd see Miguel Vasquez be aggressive with this horse. And the fact that he was able to show that he could sprint last time out as he had been a little bit more of a router. And sometimes you worry with horses that are going a distance, especially at a lower level, if they turn back and they kind of drop out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't the case with this one. He was right up on top of it. He ran a pretty a good number last time out, finishing third for Kent Sweezy, second time at this level, and it just went with a little bit of that recency. No, I agree with you because a lot of times when horses cut back, they can get run off yeah. their feet, they get on the hard chase, and it's just not what they want to do. This horse has a lot of versatility, and he showed last time it didn't bother him at all. They went quick that day. I think you're right. He susses out as the inside speed. The question is, what does American mm -hmm. Matters do? How much pressure? Or does he put on him? But if Chrome Finish runs back to that race, or even can I know he lost to 61. We'll talk about that one uh, in a second. But I, I think Chrome Finish showed last time, yeah, he can do this, and he should only get better off of that. Speaking of 61, he's second off the claim for Ernesto Ochoa. But this horse was the one that came from off of yeah. it last time where we did see Chrome Finish up on top of that pace. Yeah, and maybe he does it again. You know, mm -hmm. maybe American Matters and Chrome Finish get hot and bothered early and it, and it plays to 61, but we've gone a lot of times between drinks now. He's one for 13 with seven underneath finishes. Uh, I don't see a win on my page. So, you know, he likes yeah. to get some pieces, but he's not delivering late. Well, we've got some quality and uh, some potential future stars, I think, coming up in race number four. Good one in this maiden special weight for the three-year-old Phillies. Sprinting on the main track. We're going six furlongs here. You've got some intriguing first-time starters. You have a, a private purchase, the number six green up for Todd Pletcher, who ran second on debut at Churchill. But as you pointed out to me as we before we came back on, I'm sure after a private purchase in May, the game plan wasn't to wait until March of next year. 
year to run her back. I, there's no doubt about yeah. it. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. You've got to talk about it. It's the elephant in the mm -hmm. room. Now it's Todd Pletcher off the long layoff, and Irad's here, so everything adds up. Don't get me wrong. But like Acacia alluded to, that certainly wasn't the plan. So uh, whatever the issue was, there could be some rust to knock off. And, and honestly, you know, Acacia, those May early May two-year-old races, I know the figure was really, really yeah. big. Um, you don't really necessarily know what you're getting out of those races, who's ready that day, who's not, and who's just more bigger and precocious than the rest of them. I think Green Up has to prove it today. With that being said, unless Loved is ready on debut, we'll talk about her in a second. She doesn't have to be ready on debut. Green Up does look like she finds the right kind of field today. Yeah, it could just be the right spot. Yeah. She has a little bit of foundation, does have the layoff, but it looks like the works have been strong at Palm Beach Downs for the comeback. You mentioned Loved. Loved. She is the half-sister to Maxfield. Of course, he's better going longer. Without this is doubt. starting at three quarters. Um, I did find a stat on Brendan Walsh that I thought was interesting, too. Uh, this is for a first-time starting uh, three-year-old on dirt in maiden special weight races. He has very good numbers. Four for 27, winning 33% of the time in the money and a big ROI of 444. So Brendan can have him ready to go. The last workout, as we all know, was from the gate. Not something that I love. And you can see uh, it's from a month ago mm -hmm. the only workout available on xbtv yeah. unfortunately but she looks like a very big filly to me so i'm curious to see what she has to offer maybe this is a starting point to go a little bit longer given that pedigree but you have to be excited about this godolphin homebred yeah without a doubt now maxfield did win on debut mm -hmm. we know that he was an undefeated two-year-old um and you know as you said this is a pedigree that says i want to run yeah. longer but here she is zipping 35 and four yeah. bullet from the gate so it will be interesting to see um you know obviously i would think the connections are hoping she's a pretty serious sure. horse and that's Point being, this is the start of her career. We don't need to squeeze a lemon dry today. Sometimes these horses just win anyway, and that's kind of what uh, I'm going with. But it'll be interesting to see her get her feet wet in here and what she brings to the table and where she goes from here because it's an exciting kind of horse to wrap up the weekend here. Another intriguing firster is down to the rail for Jonathan yep. Thomas. This one um, uh, training up at Payson Park. This is the half-sister to Velvet Crush. The dam was very good, going short and long white clover so we'll see what she has to do for her debut yeah the rail's not ideal jonathan's 31 mm percent -hmm. on debut um I, I i don't know daughter of ghost sapper out of an exchange eight mare and you mentioned third fall out of the dam you mentioned uh the half sister and, and i just kind of maybe wonder if she needs one and, mm -hmm. and being down inside is is That's not okay. ideal and i'm kind of thinking this is a start to her and we'll follow her down yeah. the road quickly i wanted to mention the three i crossed my heart because I really liked what I saw from her physically in her mm -hmm. debut, looking back at my notes. Second place finisher, Veterans Highway, came back to win with an 80 by her speed figure in her next start. There were three next out winners from the race. I know she didn't do much running, but I'm really interested to see if she can improve second time out. We haven't seen her since January. That's fair, but um, I'm really intrigued by her picking up Jose Ortiz for Brian Lynch, who won the Tampa Bay Derby yesterday. Yeah, he's got a nice one in Classic yeah. Causeway that looked good again, and he does it. He takes the race to him. 21-1 um, to one on debut, so not a lot of intent. You mentioned the key race, and my notes say she had no chance with yeah. the speedy flow of the race. The winner was loose that day. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep on her at a price. That's a good one in the fourth as we turn the page, going to race number five, six furlongs on the main track 6250 non-winners of three in life for four-year-olds and upward uh, landing on the same one here jose d'angelo who had a big day yesterday uh, this horse just i think goes back to the proper level no commission yeah, I agree, and she's also going. He's also going to run on the dirt for mm -hmm. the first time since Jose claimed him. Took a shot for 12-5 last time on the Tapita. Didn't really work out. Was way too far back that day. I bought this race in my early pick five. I didn't have a strong mm -hmm. conviction, um, but no commission. Certainly one of the ones. If I had to narrow, would you know? If you're narrowing down, he's got to be up top. If you want to play devil's advocate, he doesn't have much early speed, no. and maybe that's where the five boldness comes in. As as Claudio Gonzalez finally picked up yes. that Gulfstream win yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Long, long overdue yeah. uh, for a very, very successful, you know, Maryland barn that's that's coming down here for the first time this weekend. Boldness on the drop. That's got to help. Speed on the drop. That's always a potent angle. And uh, I don't think you have to look too far, look too hard to find where mm -hmm. he's going to be early. Sir Aggravator also takes a big drop after uh, was aggressively placed last time out. But that's the first five. We'll take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll continue with the quality with the main and special weight race. And today Today's Rainbow Six. And they're off. Second in the two path. Round on her inside. Great. And a quarter of a mile to go, and he's six on top. Last of the 12. 
Welcome back to Gulfstream Today with Brian and Acacia. Glad to have you along with us. As we've talked about the first five races on the card, that means it's Rainbow Six time with this 11 race program today. And Brian and I were wondering what Ron Nicoletti will have as far as the Rainbow Six. And what do you know? It's 43, 20, 350,000 gross jackpot pool guarantee today. Moves up quickly around here. They <laughs> love to play it. And uh, here's Ronnie's ticket. We'll talk about this race in a second. He's got a couple of them down inside Sterling drive he's got in the seventh that's my play of the day a little spread in race eight and i'm just looking at my picks acacia i've got six ten nine ronnie's got five eight ten so we're you know kind of shaping up as a difficult race sky is going to be tough in the ninth and then he goes three deep in race 10, she's so beautiful on the drop for Carlos David. Figures to uh, hit pretty hard in there. And then in the finale, it'd be interesting if uh, one of those is his long shot where he likes to go Silverly mm -hmm. Rill, who we'll talk about and we'll show a replay. And then a firster for uh, Shug and Jose, personal best, who I like as well. 4320, mm -hmm. that's the blueprint. Best of mm -hmm. luck. And like we said, we paid it out uh, yep. last Sunday and already 350 in the kitty. It's building up quickly yep. and it's a good sequence today. Kicks off with a Florida bread in special weight race as this one uh, seven furlongs on the main track not an easy distance for some first time starters to tackle either this is for the three year olds and you go to the number two a west of mind we both prefer experience in here this one for Joe Orsino New Gelding I'm glad you said it because I was going Austin mine so west of mine <laughs> I had no I'm idea. guessing okay. there yeah. <laughs> this is my long shot play of the day I struggled to come up with a long shot and, and uh, this is where the, the dart lands Landed. Um, you know, 19 to 1 on debut, and Joe's not a guy that's going to crank him up too, too much. We break from the outside draw. We break dead last. It's not ideal. Hesitated at the start. Mm -hmm. Tyler's going to get aboard today. We've got the ultimate equipment change. We're first time gelding. Uh, the You know, we've got a work since then as well, and one of them's pretty snappy, too. A few works, excuse me. One of them's pretty snappy. I just thought maybe now with the gelding, Got that tightener, got that experience. It's, there's not a lot in here mm -hmm. either to be scared of. Maybe this one moves forward. Yeah, it certainly could. Just one start under his belt so far. I'm going to go back to Essential Chocolate. Uh, this was my long shot last time because first time out, I did not think he was a turf horse and did not think he was a two-turn horse. Mm -hmm. he sprinted on the dirt last time, so I said, great, here's my chance. And I was off slowly once again. The blinkers go on today, which I like for a horse that seems to have the propensity to break slowly. I still mm -hmm. do think that this is the right spot for him. And seeing Arad Ortiz mm -hmm. take the call just, I think, really spoke to some intent. I'm not going to get 10 to 1 today, unfortunately, but I do think this is the right spot. No, I agree. And uh, the, I love the intent there because, yeah. you know, no disrespect to Leon Reyes, but we're getting, you know, an Eclipse Award winning jockey here. The blinkers mm -hmm. are ideal, too, yeah. because now we can sharpen this one up a little bit. He's been dropping back too far. I would expect Irad puts him in the race. And then from there, all bets are off because now you're probably going to see the best sensual chocolate's got to offer today. If the last a couple horses in here that we use in our picks. Rematching King D to the outside for Rohan Cryin and Agare Messi Puedes, uh, who finished second last time out. That horse has kind of been racking up the starts where I guess King D still is a little bit more lightly raced. Yeah, I agree. We've got more upside with King D, Juggernaut. That was Klugman last time. Mm -hmm. So don't hold the margin against these two horses. But we're outside with King D. That's the right post for his style. Uh, and, and Jose, and who you go against Rohan Cryin at your own uh, yeah. risk right now. And making all the right moves, yep. it seems, throughout this championship meet. We're back on the turf for race number seven, a $35,000 claiming race. Four-year-olds and upward, about seven and a half on the grass. And this kicks off today's late pick five. I think I'm down to $24. After, yeah, there we go. After the scratches, my best bet of the day is Sterling Drive. So I'm going to single here, try to get some added value. Maybe we can get that three to one, though. The deep spread comes in race eight. We're going to talk about it. I mentioned Ronnie's picks, and it's that mm -hmm. kind of race. I mean, my top 
pick is the six eyes of a champion for Jose. I don't think we'll get anywhere close to 12 to one, but on the on the drop and back uh, back on the dirt, we'll try that one. And then twos all the way around, proven strategies, replay coming up of that one. Number eight, she's so beautiful on the drop. And I was with Ron, 58 in the finale. We'll go with the shug first or uh, the tap it, uh, Philly personal best, but silver re I cannot say that name. <laughs> Silver we Silvery <laughs> Rill. The eight horse. The eight horse. She's your horse. You're gonna have to talk about her. Hopefully so. Pete Aiello oh, will have an goodness. easier time. We've been doing tongue twisters in preparation for that. Uh, but things kick off on the turf as mentioned. Well, kick it off down to the inside with Sterling Drive, who you like. I agree. I think he's a huge player. It's just been a long time since he's seen the winter circle. Well, that's very, very fair. And, and you know, second off to claim the I'm Sanchez has done such a good job. Mm -hmm. He's crafty. He's had such a good meet. Claim this one for 35 from Danny Gargan. We know how tough it mm -hmm. is to move up off Danny, but he did it last time. He runs in a 25 starter, and he ran huge. And now we're on the drop here, back with friends. The post here is perfect, mm -hmm. too. And some of his main rivals have a problem with this, but you do not want to be outside going seven and a half. To yeah. me, Sterling Drive, it's it finally, <laughs> finally breakthrough time. I, I took a shot with the three, Mirzaz, who is still lightly raced. Yeah. Um, I, I think he'll be tested a little bit for class today, but I think that you can be forgiving. Last time out, he just doesn't want to go a mile and a half. I think we, we learned that. He was forwardly placed um, on top of the pace in that marathon race for a starter allowance. He won the non-winners of two condition, two starts back after being claimed for 12-5. There are certainly some questions here as to how he stacks up but I think it's just kind of back to basics for him this is a spot where he seems to belong and certainly I think a distance that he's better suited to well you bring up some good points I mean Mur Mirzaz is two for four yeah. I mean my guy's four for 37 <laughs> we got three for 28 you know look at these horses they've had their chances yeah. here's Mirzaz two for four with Jose blew up the board two back thought he ran fine last time as you is too far it's tougher mm -hmm. race on the class rise, but we've got a world of upside here, and we don't yet know what Mirzaz can do. We all know what you're getting from the rest of these. What do you like about Catch That Party? Um, it's just a better post. Yeah. That post is brutal, two back, and I didn't think he ran poorly, Acacia, and that was a tough, tough race. Midday Image is a freak around here. Mm -hmm. We know that. He just wired uh, last Saturday, I believe, and he's so good. I thought this was a sneaky good run, and he's going to be a huge mm -hmm. price. That's all. So I'm going, you know, short price on top, try to get a bomb underneath. Yeah, that might be the way to do it, as I think a thread of blue, even though, talk about a horse that hasn't won in a long time. This horse hasn't won since the Saratoga Derby as a three-year-old. Um, but he's first off the claim for Mark Cassie and he has I read Ortiz. Uh, can he grab a piece today? I, I don't know. We'll see. He's definitely, I think, a huge part of the pace in here. Yeah, I guess it's technically not a reclaim, but Mark had this horse uh, before, and mm -hmm. the pink silks of Gary Barber go back on, and that's usually a pretty good thing. We've got foundation, we've got cutback, we've got IRAD, and we've got speed, so it all adds up, but as you said, where's the win? I can't find it. We have a tricky race coming up in race number eight. Seven furlongs on the main track for this $35,000 maiden claiming race for the three-year-olds. I believe this was a race where you spread a, yeah. quite a bit. Eyes of a champion takes a drop in class for Jose D'Angelo. Yeah, so, I mean, look at the debut for 35 at this level. And I thought it was pretty sharp. Uh, dueled early, tired late, but didn't mm -hmm. really give it up that badly at 21 to 1. And as good as Jose is... First time out isn't really his jam. Mm -hmm. uh, let's draw a line through the last race. We're routing. We're in a maiden special weight. He got really aggressive. Well, it didn't work out. Well, he's back today off that race with plenty of foundation now. And I think he's perfectly drawn. And it's a wide, wide open race. You know, he's not going to be 12, but he'll be a square price. And it's a spread race. And that's mm -hmm. where I landed. Antonio Sano has two in here. I go to Mitiko. Um, this horse didn't run at all last time, but he was drawn to the outside. And I, I'm going off the race two back yeah. for 25 when he was beaten just ahead. And I actually thought he had a good chance to win that day. 
drops back down. Those maiden optional claimings, that was a very tough one for the level. Sometimes they can lean more towards maiden claiming types or more mm -hmm. towards a maiden special weight race. I thought that race was very salty in a big field going seven. So he stays at the seven furlongs. He drops back down to a level that I think that he belongs. And we'll see if he can run back to that race two back. And Jose was on two back. Yeah. And here he is again. And we talked about it earlier, 23% with Antonio. And, you know, another horse that got aggressive with last time. He was 22 to one. It was mm -hmm. a tough, tough race for the level, as you said. Now we're back where he should be. And the race two back plays with this group. It beats all to the outside is interesting. Uh, he's run twice, both second at, at uh, two different levels. Kelly Breen's been very active in the claim box lately here. Yeah, and, and he's won off the claim at yeah. the meet. And it beats all is fine. Don't get me wrong. And he's, you know, we both have him second. It doesn't mean he has to win. It doesn't mean you have to take a short price. And that's what mm -hmm. you're going to get with Irad here from the outside. We're going to be wide every step of the way. He is lightly raced. He could regress because he moved way forward yeah. last time. And, you know, Kelly does a very, very good job, and he's astute with his claims. But, you know, improving off David Fox is easier said sure. than done. So I'm not sure which way it beast all goes today. And at a short price, I don't want to take too uh, too low a number on him. Tricky race in yeah, the very. eighth. Uh, it's a good one in the ninth in this allowance optional claiming going a mile on turf. You have some really nice horses in here, four-year-olds and up. Uh, you go to the number two, Proven Strategies, who certainly has a ton of back class and has faced some top-quality horses. And he's got that early speed. Yeah, so let's take a look at the replay because he used that early speed mm -hmm. last time and that was that was problematic because here he is again down inside another horse down inside and since not where you want to be this was a good race to mere mission and hawkish mm -hmm. is the back clack black back class of hawkish came out this day too and you know this was his first start off the september layoff so he had to work hard and i thought he ran big acacia all things considered he's not going to give it up until really late look at his pace rival the 10 vow me now is 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 uh drop an anchor here already but here's proven strategies trying to gut it out he ran very very well now we're second off the layoff today we're well drawn he doesn't have to be on the lead i don't think he's gonna have to work as hard early on i expect a big big move forward two for six mm -hmm. over this turf course cassie mark cassie and edwin gonzalez that's all right 27 percent <laughs> Yeah, they have been very dangerous together throughout this meet as Proven Strategies looks to get back to the winner's circle. Skyro down to the inside is where I landed. He had a big win last time out off of the layoff. Midday image, you mentioned him a little bit earlier. He got a 100 buyer speed yeah. figure for his next victory. Um, he's just been breathing fire lately. Did find a good stat on Brian Lynch. Um, as Jose Ortiz will climb aboard this son of Verrazano. This is winner's last out on the turf at Gulfstream. Um, very good number. The horses continue to move forward, which I like. 21% win, 50% in the money, and a big ROI of 232. So hoping that this one he showed a little bit more speed last time as well. Yeah, exactly. He's got to hit hard here. It is a class rise, but he ran so well off the layoff. Does he move forward? Does he regress? That's a question. But again, another lightly raced horse that's eligible to be uh, move forward. We'll go on to race number 10 here. Five and a half furlongs on the main track. $20,000 claiming race for the three-year-old Phillies. To the outside for you, she's so beautiful. Certainly has faced tougher recently. Yeah, that's it. I mean, this is a seismic class drop, and she's acquitted herself nicely against tougher. Mm -hmm. Now she's in for 20. She's made plenty of money, so I don't really think it's a negative that she's in for 20, and there's speed to her inside. I like her in here. I go to the reclaim Lara's Lady for uh, Safi Joseph Jr. Uh, Jose D'Angelo and Safi like to claim off of one <laughs> another, but the fact that Safi takes this one back, I thought was interesting. I love the reclaim. It's yeah. one of my favorite angles at the track. If you want to play against her or want to have a nitpick a little bit, she has blown open length leads late mm -hmm. in her last two. We'll leave some time for the nightcap because it's a good one. About seven and a half on the turf in this maiden special weight for the three-year-old Phillies. We promised you some good maiden special weight yeah. races today, and they certainly have that. Um, I read the five personal best, my long shot. I don't think, given how everybody seems to like her, she's going to yeah. be a long shot. Um, regally bred Joe Allen homebred for Suge McGahee. Those are strong workouts up at Pace and Park. Yeah, look at that bullet on yeah. the 15th. And, and Jose is here, 24% down this down at Gulfstream with Suge. Plenty of work. Works. And Chuck's another one of those trainers. Bill Mock comes to mind. Uh, Brendan Walsh. They can get it done yeah, first out. You don't really necessarily think of him like that. Here he is at 14%. I, I think this is a runner. 
Feeling it by tap it could be really interesting. You've got a layoff runner in Silvery Rill, I'll say it for you, as uh, this one. I know you have a replay for her. She's faced some nice horses, too. Yeah, and there's not a lot going on in this replay. Yeah. It's just I want to, you know, hey, here she is because she hasn't been out in a while. And this is her debut, and this is what this is the real her because obviously something was amiss mm -hmm. last time. She hasn't been seen since September. But here's Kristoff off the layoff, 23%. I thought she was very, very game on debut in a good, good race. And I think now we come back with Lasix. Irad is here. The plenty of works here. I would expect her to run a big race today. This was also a time in Saratoga as the horse that beat her on debut, Blissful for Cherie DeVoe. Cherie had won a ton of mm -hmm. races that week. She, the barn was just on fire. Everything was going well at the time. Uh, just missed there. Silvery Rill did. She faced consumer spending in her subsequent start, who came back to win the Salima for Chad Brown as well. A good one in the nightcap there. Looking forward to seeing those fillies. But we are not done yet as we have the last lightning round to go through quickly here for you as we'll recap a little bit of what happened yesterday as well. Yeah, holy Toledo, Batman. <laughs> Jevian Toledo was down here yesterday and uh, congratulations to him. He wins the stakes on Headline Hunter. Jose D'Angelo's first ever stakes win. That's impossible. Yeah. Congratulations to him too. Yeah, absolutely. He's just his team won the claiming crown yeah. technical uh, stake there, but he said first open stake victory as uh, he'd never been in the winner's circle. He was he's smiling ear to ear, but one horse and one trainer that's familiar being in the winner's circle is Bill Ma, and he had another good one in Obligatory who looked really good coming back and back to a distance, I think, that really suits her as well. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you what, look out, because mm -hmm. I was dead set against her yesterday. I thought it was a, I was, thought it was a tricky spot for her to yep. come back. She was closer yesterday, as we talked about in the open. She's a newly minted four-year-old filly, and the sky's the limit for her. Look at this. This yeah. was a powerhouse performance. She did good things last year. She was second routing in a grade one mm -hmm. look out this year it's going to be a big year for mm -hmm. the judmont homebred obligatory coming up this year it was a big day yesterday though for miguel vasquez as well the hat trick for miguel putting on some nice shows yeah, congratulations, yeah. too, because, you know, some jockeys were out of town, and mm -hmm. it was there for the taking, and he took it. And Unike was good, second out for Terry Pompey, and she ran very, very very well mm -hmm. on debut. He did, and here he is moving forward now, and very, very nice Colt uh, three-year-old in the three-year-old division, probably a sprinter, but this was a sharp effort. You saw some improvement physically and mentally from the horse as well, a lot yeah, more focus second time out, and uh, certainly exciting there for Terry Pompey and the connections. And meanwhile, one more thing to tell you, here on today's lightning round as it's tough to believe we are just a few weeks away from the end of the championship meet which means we'll be focusing on the Preakness stakes and there's a lot more to talk about coming up yeah that. it's coming around so you can go to the website preakness.com and you can vote here for Preakness art by students from the Maryland Institute College of Art I believe four thousand dollars to the winner and that's a big deal and there's mm -hmm. some great art out there so check it out online I believe voting closes on the 20th so you've still got mm -hmm. some time to do so it's Preakness does such a great job, including the community and yeah. a lot of other pieces of Maryland as well. So we look forward to that. We also look forward to all of the great racing coming up here today at Gulfstream Park and look forward to sharing it with you. We turn it over now to track announcer Pete Aiello for Scratches and Changes. I remember the first time I came to Gulfstream, it was like this big fairy tale place. We back. Yeah. All the history, you know, all these great horses, trainers, jockeys. It is Barbaro to the final furlong. He is a neck in front. Barbaro wins! It was everything that I ever dreamed of. Sunday silence surges to the front. First day, opening day of the championship, me, I was kind of starstruck. You're watching LeBron James. And then next thing you know, you're playing basketball against him. That's how I felt when I'm riding with Donnie V, riding with Irad, Luis. So many famous people come, Post Malone, for all. J-Lo was there, it's epic. The weather is beautiful. The facility is phenomenal. It's all about Nick's go. Nick's go makes it four in a row. It's one of the most beautiful tracks in the country, surrounded by some of the greatest horses and riders. It's just, it's amazing.